Hi horror movie fans, this is Jamie back again for the House of Horror. Today I'm going to be reviewing a movie that was recommended to me by a fellow YouTuber and that movie is Scrapbook. Scrapbook was released in 2000. It was directed by Eric Stons and it stars Emily, I want to make sure I get these names right, Emily Hack and Tommy Benito. Um, Emily plays Clara, Tommy plays Leonard. Um, as I always state, this review will contain spoilers. If you don't want to know anything about the film, I would suggest checking out the trailer which I'll include a link to in the description bar below. Otherwise, stick around and I'll tell you a bit about about this film which is it's something I always try to say whether or not someone should watch it or not I will just say this the movie is is rather depressing um, it, it, it is what it is um, and yeah that's about all I'm gonna say so without further ado here I go into my review for scrapbook scrapbook is about a young man named Leonard Leonard is a very messed up individual he is a serial killer he kidnaps women, he takes them back to his home, and he has a scrapbook, hence the name of the movie. He makes his victims rot in the scrapbook um, of their experiences, of their ordeals. Uh, the material is very graphic, it is very raw. Um, you see not only TNA and lots of it, but you also see some penis action and so on and so forth. There is rape involved, all kinds of hard edges of things of that nature. Um, Clara realizes that the only way that she possibly stands a chance of living is if she uses the scrapbook to her advantage to try in some fashion to get through to Leonard who really is off his rocker. He is really far gone. She's locked in this room. He won't let her escape. It's filthy. It's decrepit. It's falling apart. It's just it's almost as if if you could go into the mind of someone who has lost it all, all grips on reality, his living environment mirrors that. As she begins writing in the scrapbook, Leonard becomes upset with her. He feels as if she's playing with him, and in a way she is. She wants to be free. And as the movie progresses, she continues using the scrapbook. They go back and forth, victim and, and captor. Um, in a strange quasi relationship, she tries to appeal to some form of morality in this individual who is totally gone, and you're not really sure if she will find a way to escape her situation or if she will find herself just another one of the victims who have left their mark in the scrapbook. Again, as usual, as usual, I don't go too deeply into events of a movie because I don't want to ruin, them, to ruin them. So that is a very generalized synopsis of this film. Now, I'm going to tell you a few things about it. I often mention that sometimes you have to suspend your disbelief. There were portions of that in Scrapbook. For example, the, the door that she's trapped in is so flimsy that I found myself having a hard time believing that there wasn't some way she couldn't break it down in times when she was alone. Um, there's also a scene in which she gets free and instead of running for the wood or somewhere else she runs into a barn and there are weapons galore along the wall. I mean just take your pick whatever you want. I'd have been going for the axe. Uh, she doesn't do this. Instead she goes and she hides and you can guess what happens. She ends up back at square one again. I really didn't believe that. You know I understand that when you're in a in a terrifying situation, sometimes your brain doesn't function as it should, but when you have someone that wants to kill you and you walk inside and you see, cha-ching, weapons galore, you know, something's got to click in your head to go, okay, I need, to, I need to prepare myself, I need to be ready, I need to fight. Things like this don't happen. This isn't your usual a fight, the victim fights back physically. Although she does fight him physically, it's, it's still not the same. There's also a clip where he kind of... Uh, holds her down. It's a rape scene and you notice that one of her hands are free and she never really uses it to her, her advantage. Things like that. Little bitty things that I noticed as I was watching it and I kept thinking to myself why wouldn't you scratch his face, claw his eyes out, do something more than just kind of struggle a little and not get free. Um, that Those kind of things bothered me. With that said, this is a profound movie, and the acting in it is, is very good. It, it truly is. Um, I was warned that this was the kind of movie that is kind of depressing, and, and it really, it truly is. You get really involved in Clara, Clara's mind what she's dealing with. Will she be able to escape? Will she be stuck in this reality? Will she ever find her way out? Likewise, you have Leonard, who you kind of learn and discover is someone that deep down just wants to be understood in his own bizarre way and wants to be loved, yet every time that he tries 
to get what he's looking for from someone and it always falls through, he discovers that the only way he can connect with people is to do what he does, which is horrific and which is horrid, but unfortunately it's the only way that he can find any kind of emotional connection with the world around him. On a side note, it's also bittersweet and very sad because Tommy Benita, who plays Leonard, um, actually died. He died a few years after. The, I believe he died before he even had the opportunity to view this film, which is very, very sad. So it adds a level of kind of... Uh, it's, it's hard to describe. It's kind of like it, totally different genres, but like when you watch The Crow with Brandon Lee and you know that that person is no longer on this earth it adds a, a different level, a different impact to the movie. And so when you watch this, if you know that ahead of time, it should deepen the experience. Would I recommend Scrapbook? It really depends. This is not your typical slasher gore flick. It is more of a internal, not drama, but internal fight um, and, and internal um, thinking on both parts of the characters. Um, the, as, as I mentioned, the acting is very good. I did enjoy that part of it. It's just extremely sad, it's extremely dark, and it's extremely gritty. If you enjoy movies of that nature, I would recommend that you give Scrapbook a try. I believe I got this on Amazon. I'm not sure if it's on Netflix, um, but if you have the opportunity to view it and you're interested in it, then I would say give it a go. You never know. If, if what I've told you sounds like something that would interest you on any level, it's certainly worth the watch. So there you are. There's my review for Scrapbook. I don't know what I'm going to be reviewing next week, but as always, thank you for stopping by and thank you for commenting. Um, I hope that I can come back with something. I've been extremely busy, so I've been falling back on movies that I've seen in the past but hopefully I can find something new. So until next time, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for subscribing. And uh, hopefully I should see you all next Tuesday. Okay, have a good one. Bye.